1851. And then in 1858, the world's first nearly complete dinosaur skeleton is found. It's called Hadrosaurus, and it looks like dinosaur. And we can we can start we get our our current image, like the first iteration of that, of what dinosaurs are really like. So this would have been swimming. Yes. Right approximately where it is. And you would have been dying. Yeah. Yeah. Now, take me back to that first day when you guys found something there. Mm -hmm. Because you've been doing this all your life. I do want to come back to, like, how you even got into this as a kid. We'll get there. But, like, what what was found? And did you have, like, the Dr. House moment where you just, like, look up and you're like, holy shit. I didn't. I've had that moment elsewhere in the world. Oh, you have? All right, we'll get there. I have. But here, you know, it was... It was like a muddy pit that was being mined for marl sand. You know, when they were mining it, it was always kind of a jumble. And I, I didn't think much of it. This is back in 2003. And mm -hmm. I thought, well, you know, I could bring my students here. They could find some fossils. That'll be cute. And then I'll go everywhere else in the world to do my <laughs> research, you know. <laughs> um, so it wasn't until, you know, as I said before, when the, when the quarry owner told me that they were going to go out of business, um, that I, I managed to secure a corner of the yep. quarry. And when we started to excavate methodically, then I started to see what we had there and, and its scientific importance. And then I knew I had to find a way to save the site. Right. But yeah. th so when you started to figure out, maybe the question isn't the first moment there, but when you started to figure out, like, oh my God, we just found a dinosaur bone there. You gotta be, I, you gotta be thinking, oh my God, I grew up in Linwood, New Jersey. This is like 50 <laughs> miles from where I grew up and this is where it happened, right? Well, it, it didn't surprise me um, to find a dinosaur bone there because people don't know this, but Southern New Jersey is like the cradle of dinosaur paleontology. And you knew that before all this. I knew that, yeah. So dinosaurs were first recognized from really scrappy remains in, in England. And so in the early part of the 19th century, um, bones start turning up uh, about an hour south of London in the Tilgate Forest and other places. They can't really tell what they are because the remains are, are so scrappy. Mm. Um, and that's how they get the name dinosaur. In, in 1841, a British anatomist, uh, uh, Richard Owens, uh, gives them that name. He buries it on like page you know, 240 of the Mesozoic reptiles of, of Great Britain because he doesn't even think it's important. And he, he says there's a new tribe of crocodile lizards is what he calls them. And he gives them the name dinosaur, which, Incredible. Means, which means terrible lizard. So he thinks they're the, just these big puffed up lizards. If you look at the Crystal Palace dinosaurs, these are the first reconstructions of dinosaurs made for a big exposition in, in Great Britain in the, the mid um, 1800s. And they look like monsters, right? They don't really know what they are. Hmm. Um, so that's, dinosaurs do look like when you look at them, it's like what you think was yeah, going to come out from like, under like your not, bed. Not good monsters. Oh, They're not, <laughs> not the fun kind. Not the fun. Right. Just like kind of gross monsters. You said it was Crystal Palace. Crystal Palace dinosaurs. Crystal Palace yeah. dinosaurs. Yeah, um, that's 1841, and then in 1858, the world's first nearly complete dinosaur skeleton is found. Yeah, those are the. They still exist in a park south of London. Um, those oh, sculptures. The, oh, I didn't realize. They're full sculptures. They're sculptures, okay. yeah, by a, a guy named Benjamin Waterhouse Hawkins. Yeah, they look like giant iguanas. Yeah, in fact, one of them is called Iguanodon. Yeah, that yeah. makes sense. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So Got that it. was so our, 1858. That, and look how like brutish and primitive they look. So that's yeah. our first conception of dinosaurs, 1851. And then in 1858, the world's first nearly complete dinosaur skeleton is found. It's called Hadrosaurus, and it looks like dinosaur. And we can we can start we get our our current image, like the first iteration of that, of what dinosaurs are really like. And that's found in Haddonfield, New Jersey. Come on, in eighteen fifty eight. That that's not why they named it Hadrosaurus, right? It is. I mean, it is? in the paper he says it's it's the Greek hadro, which means bulky, so it's bulky lizard. No, it's but really, it's got to be it's a double entendre, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, All right, so hadrosaurus, what period did they exist in? Jurassic? Late Cretaceous. Late Cretaceous. Yes. So similar yeah. to uh, the T Rex. Yes, the, similar to T Rex. Got it. How um, big were these things? They were big. Well, you see the, the human yeah. for scale there. I mean, they're elephant sized. <laughs> yeah, maybe a little bigger, really. Um, so, world's first nearly complete dinosaur skeleton found in southern New Jersey in 1858. And then as we spoke of, everybody knows T-Rex, but T-Rex isn't the only tyrannosaur. There are over two dozen types of tyrannosaur. T-Rex isn't the first discovered. The first discovered tyrannosaur is found in Mantua Township, South Jersey in 1866. Come on. 
It's a dinosaur called Dryptosaurus. Ken, why were you not just, like, before you even found this land, why were you not out there with, like, a dinosaur <laughs> detector? You know, like, they have the gold detectors. I, I, if I were you, I would have been out there every day waiting for a beep going, got one. I don't have a dinosaur detector. All right. Actually, well, we, we should have gotten you one. It's, it's called a shovel. Right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I would have been out there with my shovel. Because if I knew that they had found that kind of history there, I'm like, there's got to be more. Yeah. So there's Dryptosaurus. And, uh, Do we have the history, the Joe? There. Hold on. Go back to discovery and species, if you don't mind. All right. So up until 1866, theropods from the Americas were only known from isolated teeth discovered by Ferdinand Van Hayden during geological survey excursions in, in Montana. During the summer of 1866, workers from the West Jersey Marl Company uncovered an incomplete theropod skeleton in a quarry near Barnesboro, New Jersey, by the Barnesboro Inn, probably, right? Yep. Yep. With sediments belonging to the Mastrichitian aged New Egypt formation in yeah. August 1866. That's a little bit wrong, but yeah. That's a, what's wrong? Well, this well is I, I, wouldn't call it the, right. I would call it the Hornerstown formation. Or actually, no, that's the Navasink formation. There. No, but saying. it's the Mastrichtian okay. um, period. And right. then August 1866, paleontologist Edward Drinker Cope. What mm -hmm. a name. I used to have his job. You had his job? At the Academy of Natural Sciences. Wow. Yeah. You got a resume. Edward Drinker Cope, by the way, didn't drink, which is a little disappointing. I know. Yeah. He was yeah. That's nah, mm -hmm. unfortunate. All right. When he arrived, he was thoroughly surprised by the skeleton's completeness and uniqueness, calling it the finest discovery I've yet made. The skeleton was then deposited, there it is, at the Academy of Natural Scientists, mm -hmm. Sciences in Philadelphia under the catalog number, whatever that is. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah, lots of other uh, new species, uh, a new species of Mosasaur, species of Mosasaur was discovered in Swedesboro, southern New Jersey. <laughs> other dinosaurs found in, you know, the Mill Pond in Mullica Hill where you used to live, dinosaurs found there. There was, there was something like a, a, a Gallimimus found there. Um, so there's this, there's this swath of Cretaceous that outcrops from about Freehold, New Jersey, you know, Springsteen yes. land, yep. um, comes down through Cherry Hill, through Mullica Hill, goes kind of out past um, um, like Salem, and then goes- It's going down 322. Delta. Yeah, basically. Yeah. And then, you know, like, like down I-95. Oh my God. Um, so if you live on that stuff, there's a good chance you could find dinosaurs. I mean, to me, when you say something like that, that is akin. I'm not even just thinking about the wonder of like the science. Just look at it monetarily. That's akin to like having a gold mine down there. I mean, this <laughs> stuff's got to be worse. Well, I guess if you sold them, I've never sold a fossil in my life and never, never. will. No, never. Not once? Not one. Not even on like Craigslist? Nope. Okay. <laughs> no, it never will. Okay. I bought a few, but I won't oh, sell Oh, you them. bought a few? A few, like, small things that I needed for teaching or something. But, okay. Um, you know, the commercial trade in, in uh, fossils is very um, harmful to paleontology. Um, because what mm -hmm. happens? Well, when I started my career and I would, uh, I would go out to places like Montana and Wyoming, um, I'd pull up on a ranch and I'd, I'd find the rancher and I'd say, you know, hey, I'm a paleontologist. Do you mind if I poke around, I'm looking for fossils. And they'd be like, yeah, sure, go ahead. We don't care. Um, In Jersey, that would have been like, fuck off. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Um, and then um, you've heard of the T-Rex named Sue, right? Uh, it's at the Wait, Field who Museum talked now. About it's that? a huge controversy. It's, it's a sordid, sordid tale. But someone, Elizabeth Weiss, I think, was talking about that when she was um, in here. Yeah. But there was, I mean, it's a whole big story. But eventually, um, McDonald's bought Sue for $8 million. They thought they were doing something good and donated it to the Field Museum. Well, guess okay. what? That set the market. Oh, no. And now every rancher who lives on, you know, dinosaur age material That's thinks they've saying. got their retirement sitting, you know, underground. So now you walk up to a rancher and they're like, you know, you, you can't do it. You can't get on the property. And then commercial collectors go out and they dig up dinosaurs and they, they auction them off at, you know, Christie's and Barclays and, Is there... and for tens of millions of dollars. Thank you guys for checking out this clip. If you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe and hit the like button on this video. It is a huge, huge help. And if you'd like to check out this clip's full podcast episode, that link is in the description below or right here. And finally, you can follow me on Instagram and X by using the links in my description below.